Hello and welcome again to my physical science lab video series. In today's video I want to discuss and briefly walk through the third lab experiment for the online physical science class. That experiment uh, involves the basically building and calibration of a spring scale. So um, I want to do the uh, experiment walkthrough in this video and um, basically what you're going to need for it this experiment is something that you can measure lame swift that would be you know, a meter stick for example uh, you want the lengths to be measurable in at least centimeters um, and of course this guy has resolution down to millimeters even if you can't really see it very well on the camera um, secondly, you will need a simple spring of some sort. Uh, you want the spring to have maybe an unstretched length of around a foot or so. Um, I have one right here behind me. It's actually um, about the right length uh, in its unstretched state. I've sort of suspended it from a little arm that's hanging off of my bookshelf. And then, uh, in addition to that, you will want some sort of weight system. Um, if you are able to easily get weights um, like this, uh, this is actually perfectly good for doing this experiment. But since a lot of you are doing this from home, you may not have access to a weight set like this, or you may not want to try to buy a weight set like this fine, um, make do with what you can. Uh, one easy way of doing it would be to get a, a uh, empty container like a soda bottle or something and then add a known amount of water uh, each time for the weight uh, because you know that distilled water has a density of about one gram per centimeter cubed or, or one gram per milliliter. Uh, that's one kilogram per liter and weight wise that's equivalent to um, 9.8 newtons per liter of water. Um, so the way that the experiment itself works is you have your spring uh, you can see in my case uh, that the spring maybe stretches a little uh, you know, has an initial length that's a little uh, short of where my meter stick is, that's fine. Um, I'm going to actually cheat a little bit by taking a book, laying it down on the ground, and now you can see that the bottom of the spring is actually at the top of this meter stick, so now we're good, we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I really want to know how much does the spring stretch by each time that I add mass to it. So this mass hanger in this case is 100 grams. Uh, so I hook the mass hanger onto the spring. I release the mass hanger and then I look and see where is the bottom of this spring at. And according to this it's at 5.3 centimeters. So I've stretched the spring by 5.3 centimeters by adding 100 grams. So um, you would maybe make a little data table um, something like this. Um, you can add uh, how much mass you've added how much weight that's equivalent to in newtons and how much this uh, spring has stretched that should be in meters this right here is of course in kilograms so that first mass was 100 grams that is 0.1 kilogram that is a weight of 0 0.98 newtons if you want to be less precise, you can actually use a rough conversion factor. One, uh, 0 0.1 kilograms is actually approximately equal to 1 newton. As you can see, there's about a 2% difference there. 
So if you were to write one newton, I wouldn't quibble too much over it. And I said that it's stretched by 5.3 centimeters, so that's 0 0.053 meters. Okay, so that's my first data point. Second data point, I pick another mass. This is 100 grams. I attach to the spring. I let it stretch a little more. I measure where the bottom of the spring is again. Here it appears to be about 11.4. So now we're at 200 kilograms, 0 0.20. I said 11.4 kilograms. This is uh, 1.96 newtons. 0.114 meters. Okay, so I need to take enough data that I have maybe seven or eight data points worth for this uh, graph. In the instructions, you're supposed to also find how much weight you can add to this before it starts stretching at all. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a smaller weight increment on me uh, here. You can do this easily from home by taking the empty uh, soda bottle or what have you, suspending it from the end of this, and then just adding a little bit of water until you notice that it starts to stretch. Once that happens, you can find the volume of water. From that, you can find the mass. From that, you can find the weight. Um, once you get enough data points, what you're going to do is make a line Oh, excuse me, make a graph um, which has on one axis the force that you've added. So that's how much weight you're adding to this uh, spring. And on the other axis, you can put how much this spring stretches by. What we're actually wanting to know is how much force this spring is applying to the uh, weight that we've hung from it. So that's a function of how much stretch there is. So we're actually going to go ahead and put delta x on the x-axis. And we'll put force from the spring in newtons on the y-axis. And so you'll have to make a scale for this. You'll basically end up plotting your points. Maybe they'll end up looking something like this you'll see that they are basically a line of some sort or should see that they make a line of some sort um, or you can see if they make a curve and need to make a parabola out of it so square each axis and see if this changes it to a line uh, the, the points that I put on here actually happen to make a line like this um, and once you have a line, you need to take two points that are on that line. Notice that I'm not circling two data points here. I'm picking two points on the line of best fit. And from those two points, find the slope. And then also draw the line so that it intercepts this y-axis and find the y-intercept. And that y-intercept actually should correspond to your w naught. This is the weight that you have to add before the spring stretches at all. It may go for the origin, in which case it, it starts stretching immediately. Maybe that your spring is coiled a little bit tightly, and therefore you have to add some weight before any stretch occurs. The slope is, gives you the uh, spring constant. which is represented by K, or KS for spring. So that should be you know, a, a run-through of basically the lab itself. Uh, you're asked then to write a one paragraph uh, conclusion and summary of what you've done. So this pretty well covers most of the, the lab. The one thing that I want to add is that when you go to make this um, graph, 
it's best to use either graph paper or your computer. I, of course, am just sketching it for uh, demonstrative purposes, but if you use graph paper, it's easier to set up your scales, or if you use your computer, it's easier to set up your scales. It's easier to get a good slope and so on. And you'll probably want to use a ruler to get this line of best fit rather than freehanding it. Again, the reason why I did that is because I'm just trying to show uh, the basic steps, not because I'm trying to do this with any real accuracy or precision. Um, so please do that. And uh, that is the lab. So um, thank you for watching this video, and I hope that this was helpful to all of you who are attempting this at home. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and good luck.